Hi, my name is Pat Adams, a spiritual director and blogger about the spiritual life. The consuming interest of my life has been this, how do I, how do we live a life centered in God? And yet deeper still, who am I really? What is my purpose? How do I connect deeply with God? These are the questions I will address in this video series. The phrase, to let go and let God, can be a guiding light for a person who is seeking a more meaningful, purposeful life. I know it's not in the Bible, but it is descriptive of how our lives have to change when we're ready to put God first. Here's how I look at it. God has created each of us, a certain package of gifts and talents and challenges, to thrive and give back to the world and to God all that he or she has been given. As we grow up in this world, we become conditioned to the culture's values, which divert us from our God-given purpose. So one way of thinking about how we might get back on the track of the initial trajectory at our birth is to go back to the source and start over again, this time with God's presence. To do that, we have to slowly disengage from the cultural aims and methods that we were taught in our homes and schools and even churches. We have to detach from the hold the culture has on us. And why would we do that? We have found that those aims and methods are not natural to us. They do not serve us. They do not fulfill us. It's like we've been taken on the culture's paradigm, tried it out, and found it a bad fit. And so we go back to the source and start over again. First, we have to discover what is God's will for us, for this moment, this day, this lifetime. And to do that, we need to connect with the indwelling spirit of God and with our own souls. For they've been sending quiet signals to us for years, thoughts about how we might reconnect to our true selves and to God to tempt us back to the true agenda for our lives that was rooted in that package of gifts and talents and challenges that's in our makeup. This requires an ability to listen deeply to what God and our souls are saying in our lives. We have to step back from the repetitive mind that is so tracking that cultural paradigm for us and learn to identify with the deeper, truer self. Take my favorite metaphor. All the activity in the ocean takes place in the top 15 feet or so of the ocean. The waves, the choppiness, storms, etc. All except a tsunami. Beneath all this activity are long, slow currents that seemingly go on forever. Our lives are like this too. On the surface is a lot of busyness and preoccupation with the surface stuff of our lives. While underneath the busyness, the slower, slower, longer arcs of our lives go unnoticed. Unnoticed goals and desires. Things we'd love to do if we ever had the time or the money. New directions we'd love to take if we weren't so enmeshed in this career or other stuff. The things that our hearts and souls long for. Our unmet needs languish unheard in the busyness of our minds and our lives. This is the stuff that fulfills our souls, that brings great pleasure in doing what we do, that might be effortless if we tried it, because the desire and the capacity is built into us. As long as our attention is a captive of the culture and the world, we probably will never pay attention to these quieter voices within us. If we somehow hear their call and we give them permission to take hold in us, then our lives change forever into a deeper, truer expression of who we are. To me, these quiet voices come from the Lord and from our own souls who hold the agenda for our lives. And what they offer us is the freedom to be who we really are, not who the culture tells us we were meant to be. To listen to this wisdom within means to begin to give it time and space and the freedom to grow in us as a desire to become whatever, whatever we are drawn to. It means that we have to step back from our mind's normal offerings 
and listen to those deeper, quieter voices. We have to become an observer of our thoughts, but no longer engaged emotionally with them. They will no longer be drivers of our behavior because we are listening for the deeper, truer voice within. And there we will find God and our own true selves. And we learn to let go of our attachment to what the culture and the world think and eventually depend entirely on input from God and the soul. I don't know if the soul is the place where we communicate with God or whether it is the indwelling spirit of God, no matter. If we listen to that still small voice within, we'll be headed towards our truer self. Each step will affirm that true self, the rightness of what it says for us. We have a lot of cultural stuff, world stuff to let go of, assumptions, expectations that we have been taught and adopted for ourselves, preferences based in the world, some culturally based desires too that aren't for us. These underlie the judgments we make about what we hear from God. At some point, we just have to step over the line that divides the world and how it thinks from God's world and how he thinks. It is a sea change for us to opt for God's world instead of the very human world. Letting go and letting God sounds like a very passive thing to do, but actually it is a partnership with God in which we're both active and engaged. Given that whatever we do is inspired by God to be the next thing or step on the agenda for us, we are becoming more and more active in its pursuit. And the more and more each step affirms our deeper self, the less rebellious we become, the less likely we are to go back to the world for anything. All of this becomes a positive focus for our lives, to be who we were created to be, doing what we were created to do. We are happy to align our will with the will of the one who knows us better than we know ourselves and to serve and to love him, not just because he is the creator of the universe, but also because he gives us the gift of becoming ourselves, not a copycat clone of thousands or millions in the culture. I've talked about what we have to give up to let go and let go on. Now let's talk about what qualities we have to acquire to do that. First, there's trust, which is learned as one follows this path that God is laying out before us. Trust that God will meet our needs as they arise, that we will find a fulfilling life for ourselves. Trust that we will be okay no matter what happens. Trust that everyone around us will be okay too. And secondly, there is willingness. Willingness, even eagerness, to try what is being offered or to accept what is coming into our lives. And thirdly, love. We have to bring love into our lives, God's love and forgiveness for us and our love for God, and then love and forgiveness for ourselves and then for others. Once love becomes the mode of doing, it is the primary thing in our lives. God is love and so are we. Fourthly, we need to grow into all the fruit of the Spirit, love, peace, joy, patience, goodness, gentleness, kindness, faithfulness, and self-control. Fruit is the end product of the deepening relationship with God, just as it is on an apple tree or pear. These qualities grow in us as we turn more and more of ourselves pain and suffering, guilt and shame, over to God for healing, for acceptance. On our own, we cannot set out to acquire them. They are the fruit that has been grown from the seed, and that from the flower, and that from the leaf. It is a long process, and in the words of Jesus, is a mysterious process. In other words, we do not manage the process. We can only participate in it. To sum up what letting go and letting God means, let's see what we've become in the process. We're no longer rebellious or ego-driven. We are tuned to the voice of the indwelling spirit of God, well on our way to realizing our creative potential, giving back to the world what has been given to us. We are living in love and giving back that love to God and to everyone else. 
We are doing what comes naturally to us, given our gifts and talents and all that we have learned from our challenges. Thank you for watching. I look forward to hearing from you soon.